Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Group of students cheats on exams, but the professor, avoiding conflicts, curves the grades to reward those who attended and didn't cheat. The second story. After a frustrating job interview deception, the candidate and fellow applicants brilliantly reject the offer causing stress for the recruiter and at the same time losing the best candidate. The third story. Toxic coworkers celebrated my departure, so I discreetly placed 50 unsettling selfies of myself around the workplace as a parting surprise. On to the first story. Cheating students with aggressive helicopter parents? Not a problem for my math professor. I needed to take an upper level math class required for my degree and thought I'd have the best chance at passing it if I took it on its own with nothing else to distract me, so I signed up for the summer session at my university. The class ran five days a week for six weeks, and consisted of myself, three other regular summer students, about 20 to 25 incoming freshmen who were living in the same dorm as part of an early start program, and a professor so old he remembered teaching one student's mother in the same math class over 20 years prior. The class syllabus indicated that we had three exams and a final, and then we'd have 25 quizzes, about one on each non-exam day, and the quiz portion of the overall class grade was weighted fairly heavily. The professor also informed us that he wouldn't be requiring or grading homework, but that if we found anything difficult, we should work through the corresponding homework questions and go to office hours if we still didn't understand. So the first day of the class, everyone attended, and there were more students than desks, so we dragged enough extras in from an empty classroom. The second day of the class, the professor gave us the first quiz as promised, but there were a couple empty desks, so not everyone had returned. This wasn't unusual. Sometimes students would realize they were in over their heads, or the long days of summer classes weren't for them, and drop or switch it immediately. The third day there was another quiz, and the people who were absent the second day had returned, but there were even more people absent. Within a week it was obvious that the professor had been telling the truth about a quiz every day, but only the four of us regular students had showed up every day, and an average of two-thirds of the early start students would skip at any given time. On the day of the first exam, everyone showed up and like the first day of class, the room was full. The professor passed out the exams, announced he'd be in his office if we needed anything, and left the classroom. We worked in silence for a few minutes, and then one of the early start students quietly asked, does anyone know the answer for the question number two, with the circle? A second early start student answered with an incorrect answer, which the first dutifully wrote down. A third early start student asked, what was the first step again? And the second student repeated his incorrect answer. Through this entire time, the other regular students and were staring at each other, first in abject shock that cheating was happening so openly, and then in barely concealed amusement as they continued to share wrong answers, because we realized that since most of these students had not been in class, they'd all get the same incorrect answers, which would be a dead giveaway to the professor that they'd been copying from each other. The next day, the professor handed back the graded exams to the handful of us in the classroom, and said nothing about cheating or academic dishonesty, so we said nothing thinking that maybe he didn't mention it to us because we weren't involved. The next days and the next weeks he still said nothing, as the early start students continued to skip classes more than they attended them, and unknowingly shared wrong answers on the other exams. The day before the final, almost everyone was in the classroom again. The professor said that since he knew it was a fast-paced class, and not every student was able to make it to class every day, he would be curving our grades up. Instead of making the quiz portion of our grade the cumulative total of all 20 plus quizzes we'd taken, he'd only count our top 10 quiz scores and average them. The three other regular students and I had all hoped that if we worked hard, perhaps we would get a C required to use the class as a prerequisite without retaking it, and this was an incredibly generous curve, and would effectively guarantee we'd pass, and could potentially even allow us to still earn an A if we did well on the final. Much later I realized that the professor was using the homework questions as quiz questions, so if we'd had difficulty on a topic and did the homework questions as he recommended, we'd have learned the solution to the quiz question. Some of the students who cheated and skipped frequently not only had low grades that were failing with no chance of redemption, even with a perfect final before the curve at this point, but they'd missed so many quizzes that even with the curve, some of them had to take zeros for some of their top 10 quiz scores. In the end, it turned out that all four of us regular students got high Bs or As, while the early start student grades almost all got curved to Ds or low Cs. So what makes this a tale of petty revenge, and not just consequences of not attending and paying attention in class? If the professor had simply graded according to the original rubric, then many of the students would have failed, 
And since this was an expensive university, some of them would have had parents who'd have called up the university and made a scene, and appealed the grade, and perhaps may have gotten them reversed. If the professor had turned in everyone who cheated for academic dishonesty, which was an automatic failure, then the fallout would be even worse. Almost every single student's parents would be calling to appeal the decision. And in fact, parents had threatened or attempted legal action over failing grades for academic dishonesty before. The academic dishonesty charges would likely be overturned because everyone would claim that they were the ones being copied from instead of the ones doing the copying. And if someone caved and admitted what the others had done, us four could have even potentially got dragged into it because we witnessed it and didn't report it. So by using the curve that he did, the professor made their grades high enough that the students didn't fail the class, yet low enough that if they wanted to use the class as a prerequisite or to fulfill a degree requirement, they would have to retake it the same as if they'd failed any other way. Also, if parents attempted to file complaints with the university regarding their children's low grades, the professor would be able to defend his actions by pointing out that he in fact curved their grades higher than they would have otherwise been. I had a friend who worked in the administrative offices, and according to her, although under federal law parents can't access their children's college records without permission, many students either sign something that gives their parents permission to access records that include grades, or will just show their grades to their parents if they want help in getting it changed. The second story is, you can keep your job offer. During the Egyptian revolution, I lost my job as a software engineer. And after a while aimlessly looking for a job, I went to the UAE, where my dad worked as a teacher. And I gotta tell you, finding a job in Dubai is hard. Anyway, one day I got a call from a call center for a job interview with Etisalat, major telecom company in UAE and Middle East in general. For IT technical support position from recruitment company that I don't recall, I send my CV to. It's okay. I had A-plus training and I'm confident enough in my skills providing desktop support, or something similar also, I might be able to change jobs within the company. The job was in a very far emirate, where it took me three hours and a half to get there, and spending 35 US dollars on transportation with an empty stomach, just to be there at 10 AM, and they wasted my time till 1 PM to get my interview, only to find the job interview was for customer service position working in a call center. I was mad and peeved off. I went to talk to other applicants, many whom have a degree in computer engineering or network engineering, and apparently recruitment lied to us, tricking us under the promise for IT engineering position or something similar. While Edisalot only wanted customer service people who knew what's keyboard and mouse is. I went and got contact information for everyone there, and we added each other in Facebook. While taking my three hours and a half trip back to home, I got a call from recruitment company telling me, congratulations, it gives us great pleasure to inform you that you've been shortlisted to be employed with our client. Well, they told me I have to be in Dubai tomorrow morning to sign up for their offer. But not only that, but the job starts in five days, so I had to look for an apartment, move my stuff and look for roommates within five days. Ah, also there's no time to think about the offer. Either you agree right there right now or it'll go to someone else. Yeah, right. I said yes, I'll be there as soon as I came back home. I contacted every applicant I talked to, and we all agreed to say yes and never show up. I can't tell you how satisfying it is. When the recruiter called, he definitely sounded stressed and told me why I didn't show up. I said, Bashkar, why did you lie to me on the phone and email about the position? They didn't want IT engineer, they wanted customer service. He was like, no, 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 uh, um, uh, it was a mistake. I said, yeah, I made a mistake too by saying yes and I don't want to sign up to a company who lies its way through for commission. And I hanged up. You think they'll never contact me again, but they did twice after that. They practically begging me to come. I acted as a smart A as much as I can. Well, how can I come when you said in your email that if I miss the appointment, the job will go to someone else? Uh, um, you're a very important candidate for the job. Well, did you raise the offer? No, you can get promoted. Well, I will consider it if you offer accommodation. Apparently everybody I knew there turned their offer down, and I can imagine how F the recruiter was. I hope he get ripped a new one from his manager, or Edisalat won't deal with this recruitment company again. I recently found that Edisalat offers 7,000 AED for that position, while the recruiting company was offering 4,800 AED. is like more than 30% from your base salary. They still haven't found an employee. The third story is... Challenge accepted. Edit. R-E-C-E. Registered Early Childhood Educator, ECE, Early Childhood Educator, Unregistered. Doorknob slips are those plastic thingies you put onto doorknobs and prevents little ones from opening doors. The Ministry of Education are people who check certain childcare settings, and if you fail their inspection, you can lose your license and daycare can be closed. Cinnery was a spelling mistake. It was sensory table, 
a table filled with materials for sensory play. In March 2019, I left my job as it was only a before and after school program, and I wanted something full time, as I only worked 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. to 3 to 6 p.m. The pay was good, the staffing was amazing, and everyone was kind and helpful. We held raffles throughout the year, Christmas parties, and it was such an amazing environment to work in. I got hired as an REC to work with another company in a preschool room. Full-time hours, paid vacation, benefits, pension, huge pay raise, I was set. Sadly, the work environment was extremely toxic, and let me just explain something. It all boiled down to one very toxic person. Let's call her Courtney. Courtney was someone who also made three of my other coworkers quit. I hate to say it, kinda like a millennial Karen. She felt entitled at her job, had this aura of I'm better than you, you're below me kind of vibe. Any mistake or wrong answer, any accidents, etc., she would belittle you. The way she talked to you, it just felt like knives being stabbed into you, just from her tone and attitude alone. She was just a cold, nasty, and a brown noser POS. One time she got bumped to assistant manager, maternity leave, but lost the position within the day because of how awfully bad she micromanaged, how she treated the team, apart from the new manager, and how she just destroyed the team's confidence in her. She was the one who spoke to you through the kids if you can understand that. For example, Courtney would talk to them while sitting like, you better stay away from the door. Insert my name here, forgot to put the doorknob slips. If ministry came, we would be in big trouble. Anyways, March 2020, I finally had enough. I tried my best with her. I'm known to be very extremely patient, but I also have a very fiery side which takes a lot for me to snap. And it's funny, I didn't actually snap. I just made a point. Despite all my new perks, I decided to just quit. I couldn't snap at her career-wise. However, I never ceased an opportunity, and I had the best opportunity fall right into my lap. I knew my resume was stacked. My job's always in need and I could go anywhere. I cried at the idea of change, but I needed out. And I had given my two weeks notice. Courtney, I'm not sure if she knew that she was the reason we all left. A part of me feels like she did. She showed no empathy towards my decision to leave. Rather, she simply stated she hoped not to be placed in preschool. Float her position. What happened was simply one day, my work husband at the time, Bestie, came up to me with some hot gossip. He had overheard Courtney say how she was happy she wasn't going to see my face anymore. That did sting, but at the same time, I had a challenge. Don't let Courtney forget my face. But how? Because frankly, I didn't want to see her face either. I thought about it and perfected an idea. On my last day, I secretly brought in 55 by 7s of a zoom in on my face. And it wasn't just a close-up, we're talking a Kubrick staring, the Grinch grinning monstrosity of a selfie. I hid a few in random books in the closet full of sorted books. I made sure to slip a pic into many categories, like Easter, Halloween, animals, farming, seasons. I hid some in costumes, Halloween, Christmas, Easter. I taped some to the bottom of the lids of the tank, not C to the toilets. I put some between diapers and random sleeves of extras, in the spare hats and mittens for winter, under the biggest rug, behind the bookshelf, bottom of the sensory table. At the time, it was colored macaroni. I went all out. And the thing was, she had to go into my position for ratios until my position was filled. She was a floater staff, and I confirmed it when I saw the schedule for next week and she was in my position. My friend who still works there messages me here and there when one is found. Apparently, Courtney just crumples them angrily. She knows I know what she said. The last one found was back in July 2023. They found one in his season's book of summer. Edit. I'm an ECE for our local school board, and it's the best job I've ever had. Full-time, amazing coworkers, good pay, and I'm loving it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out, and hit the like button to support the channel.